This is a uh, joint work between um, two German clearing centers. Uh, I'm myself, I'm from the Archive of Spoken German at the Institute for the German Language. Um, Hannah Hedeland, who is here in the audience somewhere, and Daniel Jetka are from the Hamburg Center for Language Corpora. Okay, so this is about uh, web, service, is web services in Clarin, Clarin D for a start, um, by which I mean the usual suspects, such as um, services for lemmatizing part of speech tagging named entity recognition parsing and so on, and especially the type of web services that uh, Weblicht allows you to chain in annotation chains, as many of you will know. Um, Weblicht operates on the text corpus format as the underlying data model, which is, uh, and most of these serv services are built with and are also meant to operate on canonical written language data, meaning typically newspaper texts um, yeah, or other, um, other kinds of modern written text. And the question we were working um, on is um, how can these be used with transcriptions of spoken language? Yeah, spoken language data comes in a, uh, usually comes in one of a few widely used formats. There actually was a guide on interoperability uh, and standards in the first Clarin phase, which identified some, I don't know exactly, seven to 12 widely used formats. The most important ones are probably chat, which Brian just uh, introduced, the ALAN annotation format, Xmeralda, Transcriber, and Prat. And one of the challenges here is that these formats uh, are more than what you usually have for text. They are more than or they are different from a simple stream of tokens. Uh, you have things like non-speech tokens. You have transcriptions of pauses, of non-verbal activities, um, of other vocal activ activities like breathing. You have um, parallel structures all over the place, especially overlaps, but also things like alternative transcriptions. Um, you typically have time alignment in these data, which is also a piece of information you do not find in the canonical written um, language. You often do not have sentences. You do not have a strict document hierarchy, uh, which is also a kind of silent assumption for many models that work with written um, language. And you have things like um, incomplete or imperfect defect tokens, like incomprehensible speech, incomplete words, disfluencies, and so on. For all of these reasons, TCF is actually not sufficient to uh, ac accommodate all the information that you find in spoken language transcriptions. So um, our general approach was to start from a common format to represent transcriptions, which is an ISO standard very recently uh, published. and. Um, to have um, conversion web services that will turn the tool formats into that um, common format. And then there are two ways of going about um, the web service um, question. One is to try to encode this common format to TCF, then use the existing services and decode again to return to the original format, which somehow means you hide the spoken language specific um, features of the data. Um, and the other way is to um, develop specific uh, services that operate specifically on that common format. Um, and maybe that are also specific to this type of data, uh, like orthographic normalization, forced word alignment, prosodic annotation, things that only make sense for um, spoken language data, or you think of uh, a part of speech tagging that is aware of transcribed pauses uh, or something like that. Yeah, and the general architecture would then look something like this. You start with one of the tool formats. You have one web service for converting that to ISO TI, and then you either get, go um, along the upper uh, route uh, via a TCF encoder decoder pair and use the existing Weblicht services or you go directly into um, web services that operate on that ISO TI um, format. In either case, what you'll get in the end um, is an ISO TI document uh, plus the annotations that the web service has provided. So a few words about the ISO um, standard. This has actually a rather long history. Um, 
Yeah, I made some first suggestions on how to use TI for transcriptions of spoken language in 2005. We had a common a joint effort uh, between different tool developers uh, on interoperability between the transcription tools. Then there was this clarion guide I already mentioned and um, a further refinement of the TI proposal. And since 2012, this has become an official ISO project, which was concluded in August 2016 with the publication of that um, ISO standard transcription of spoken language. I have to say uh, that the scope of this standard is clearly on orthographic transcription, not on phonetic transcription, and it's clearly on verbal behavior, not on multimodal aspects of um, interaction. You can probably make use of the standard for these things also, but you'll probably find that it's underspecified in terms of phonetic features and in terms of um, multimodal uh, things. In any way, it is ready to use now. It is completely compatible with all the data we have at our two centers, so we would be ready to simply deliver uh, our data in that format. There are existing converters, um, general purpose converters for Exmeralda, Volker, Transcriber, and Chat. There's a, uh, we've tested it with ELAN files on a corpus for corpus basis, because as you know, ELAN is one of the most complex formats, so it's difficult to write a generic converter in that case. Um, and it's also possible to convert BRAT, um, although you need an intermediate step here, because BRAT doesn't have a concept for speaker assignment, and that's crucial in that data model here. Yeah, what does it look like? For the macro structure, we simply took the, um, the element that the TI guidelines already define. You have speakers, you have a timeline, and uh, the main structure is in a sequence of U elements with start and end points, and you can have additional anchors inside the U's for arbitrary alignment, uh, alignment of arbitrary uh, chunks of um, your transcription. And then underneath that, you can have microstructure. You don't, you don't have to. You can simply put um, character data underneath that. You can't, probably can't really read that, but the first example is simply character data. The second one has an additional anchor inside the utterance, uh, and the uh, numbers three and four have additional structure, uh, most importantly tokenization, meaning word segments, pause segments, vocal segments. Um, and um, the last one also has a segmentation underneath um, the U element and above the word elements into, in this case, intonation phrases or more general sort of sentence equivalents of um, spoken language. Yeah, and one thing we had to add, which is crucial to the annotation web services, is a mechanism for standoff annotation. There already is a generic mechanism defined in TI, which consists of span groups and span, which refer to things that have ideas. Um, and we additionally introduced a so-called annotation block to group utterances with their annotations. Uh, we borrowed this mechanism from the TI standoff proposal by uh, Laurent Romary, Piotr Bansky, and others, which was recently introduced at the TI um, conference in Vienna. So um, the process now is like that. The first step is we convert from a given tool format to that ISO TI standard, which is done um, through a style sheet for Exmeralda, Transcriber, and Volker, and by proxy, by first converting, but the user doesn't need to know that, through uh, to Exmeralda, and then applying the style sheet for Chat and Prat. Um, and this is realized already as import and export filters in the tools we um, provide to the community, Exmeralda and Volker. Um, it is also realized as um, functionality of a so-called droplet, a desktop application where you can simply drag and drop files um, on your local system and then they'll get converted um, automatically. You may know this from, from MP3 converters like LameDrop or something. And they're also realized, and this is the important thing here, as web services at the Hamburg um, Center, for example. Um, I think that one is the Exmeralda converter, which already has a PID, which is described with SIMD metadata, so you can also find it um, through VLO. What's important is that um, in most cases, 
the uh, original formats don't have any explicit mark of, of microstructure um, except for Volker. Um, but tokenization is absolutely obligatory if you want to use TCF because the token is the basic unit there. So uh, included in that process is what we call a segmentation, which is a sort of tokenization algorithm that um, is built on the regularities of transcription conventions and that will um, automatically um, pass the character data and add the um, microstructure markup. Yeah, step two then is to um, map this ISO-TI format to the TCF input, the encoding step. Um, basically what we do here is we map what can be mapped and we ignore the rest. Um, basically this means we map um, word elements to tokens, also sometimes um, punctuation elements um, to tokens, but that's not very common in spoken language transcription. Um, and we use either U or, if it exists, the uh, more fine-grained segmentation element SEC as the sentence equivalent, which, which is also important for many um, annotation web services. We keep the original document in the text source element of the TCF file, which is important because we want stateless um, processing of these data. So. Um, after it has been processed in Weblicht, we have the original document, so to speak, in the resulting file. And since we keep the original IDs also in the TCF file, we are then able to merge the documents again and insert the new annotations into the input document. Yeah, then comes a Weblicht chain where you can do basically anything that Weblicht allows you. So I won't go into any details here. You can tokenize, you can recognize named entities, you can do constituent parsing, um, and so on, um, resulting in a TCF file that can then, in the last step, be decoded again into TI. Um, ISO meaning, uh, most importantly, that the TCF annotation layers, like the part of speech tags on the left-hand side here, will be mapped to uh, spans and span groups as prescribed by the, by the um, standard. Um, yeah, that's one way of doing it. A more elegant way would probably be to cut out the middleman, um, that is not to go via TCF, but to um, use TII so directly, which means you wouldn't lose all the information that doesn't fit into TCF. So what we'd really like to have is web services operating directly on the TI ISO format. Um, for example, one thing um, that we couldn't already provide is uh, a web service for adding a normalization layer. We uh, have lots of data that is transcribed in modified orthography, um, also called literary transcription. And um, for many processing purposes, you need an additional layer with standard orthography. We have um, methods to do that automatically, and we could turn that into a web service operating on TI ISO. Likewise, we have um, adapted um, the Stuttgart Tübingen text set um, to uh, be more suitable for interaction data. We have a um, parameter file for tree tagger for that now that would also be a candidate for a web service directly operating on this transcription format. And what would also be interesting is um, services which do not just operate on the transcription text, but which also um, make use of the corresponding audio or video signal one Point in case would be um, forced word alignment through web mouse. So you give web mouse a transcription in that format. You give it the um, you give it the uh, corresponding audio signal, um, and what you get in return is um, alignment anchors for each in front of each word or something like that. Um, there's actually no appropriate training tool for this kind of task at the moment. I thought that maybe Switchboard would be something like that, but as I learned yesterday, it's not really um, intended um, as, a, as a real training tool like Weblicht, but just as a Switchboard. 
yeah, the, the status of implementation is we've had um, a proof of concept in Exmeralda for quite some time, which doesn't operate on WebLicht as a web application, but um, on WebLicht as a service. What you have on the right-hand side here is the, the dialog where you specify parameters uh, for that proof of concept implementation. We also have all the converters um, ready and um, yeah, it took us some time to coordinate the WebLicht integration, the big um, problem, or actually not that big, but really a bit hard to coordinate, was um, that we need to tell WebLicht in different steps what kind of formats it is dealing with. Um, that is done through MIME types, and there was quite a lot of discussion in the Claren developer forums and so on, on how to um, agree on MIME types at least uh, in German Clarin centers, but actually Clarin wide. This is on the way now. I think the standard committee will have something to say about this as well. Um, so now we're actually ready and the web services are under construction. We wanted to have them ready for today, which didn't work out, but we'll probably have them ready once the, um, the full versions of the papers are required. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, please, some questions? Well, not so much a question, but rather a, let's say, uh, comment that I think this is the kind of work we should all be doing in, in Clarin, because this is work on interoperability, making sure that the tools that we have, that are fantastic tools, uh, can work on the formats that people uh, want to use or are actually in use uh, at the moment uh, already. And so I want to stimulate everybody to work on this kind of things. Hi, so maybe in that vein, I would uh, also ask uh, how difficult would it be to kind of integrate existing services that everybody is creating for different languages uh, into uh, some kind of the standard uh, pipeline or chain uh, that you are developing. So if you were to uh, create something like that, what would be like the minimum requirements to, to create such an integration? Well, I have a little bit experience on that because the uh, tools we had weren't operating on ISO TI to begin with. It depends a lot on how close your actual assumptions about data format are to the assumptions of the ISO TI format. <laughs> but hopefully we've thought, probably not of everything, but uh, of the most common um, formats. So if you have a service that operates on, let's say, uh, Prat files, um, it shouldn't be too difficult to adapt this service to operate on the TI ISO, and you always have the possibility to, um, in the background, to convert whatever you want. The user doesn't need to know <laughs> as long as he knows what to put in there and what to get out of it. Um. Yeah, switchboard speaking. Um, <laughs> so I'm happy to uh, integrate your individual web services into the switchboard. Um, uh, yesterday I said that, of course, uh, the chaining could be done by the human. You just call one uh, web service after the other, uh, you know, feeding the output you got from calling one web service into the, for the input as the, uh, to the uh, follow-up web service. Um, I'm also wondering if you could implement web services that call other web services. And then from the switchboard, you just have to call that complex uh, web service to do chain that, you, that you'd like to have. That would make it easier for the user. Yeah, um, it's probably not. That's probably not too different from using WebLicht as a service, where you first define the chain in the WebLicht web interface, and then you have a a single reference to an actually complex chain of web services, which you can address. Then might be, uh, yeah, might be a way to go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now let's stay in contact and get these things, yeah. individual ones, yeah. integrated first. I was wondering if, um, or Benzo Windhauer from Claren Erich and Mertens Institute, if, is the specification freely available for ISO or is it part of, uh, it's also part of TEI, so it could be open as well? You probably know the answer since it's an ISO standard to get the official ISO document you have to pay something like 120 francs. 
But there's an agreement between TEI and ISO that uh, not the document itself, but the content of the standard can be disseminated freely through TEI. Um, we're not quite there yet, uh, but of course I'm allowed to and I'm ready to share any version of the draft of the ISO standard with whoever is interested. But I would also have to say, um, I always found it strange that you have to pay for these ISO standards, but I understand now because ISO provides a lot of service and it's actually not that expensive. So if you're a clearance center, you should maybe, and you're working in that area, you should maybe think about investing these 100 Swiss francs and then you have the official ISO document. So <laughs> I don't have the document myself, by the way. I still have to buy it. <laughs> yeah, ah, 120 francs, right? <laughs> France, euros. Is it francs that it? No, it's Swiss, Swiss, francs. Swiss francs. Oh, Swiss francs. Okay. So, so I, I, when you go, you said you had to take chat through proxy through Esmeralda. Um, I'm just worried about data loss in this in these chains, because we want to get the results of this back into chat files, and it seems like it's getting stripped out, and and I don't know if everything getting back. Um, well, we have a history on that question. Yeah, we do indeed, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> so, and, um, and so that's why I asked the question, because that would be a real problem for um, us. Yeah. It, it won't probably, it won't be completely um, lossless, but since we invested so much time in getting the chat to Esmeralda conversion right, I think that for most kinds of data it should work pretty well. But the ideal solution would, of course, be to have a converter that, direct, that operates directly on chat Data. Um, so even if you have that, don't you still have some possible? Then you ha do you have a converter that goes through this Weblix chain, and then it goes back into the chat form? You have to have both sides. I, no. I wasn't talking about going back to the chat format because, of course, um, there is information loss wherever the ISO TI. Model That's what is, my real is, question is. Yeah. Is more um, powerful than the original formats, but you can't have it all. I mean, yeah. Well, there's, uh, there's people a, want it all, though. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, um, if, if you really want interoperability, you have to uh, yeah, you have to think about cases where one format can accommodate more information than the other one. And of course, in these cases, it's not possible to go from the format that has more potential for recording information to the one that has fewer without information. Right, else. exactly. But that's that's true of almost all the formats. Probably you can always find some solution for Elan because it has these complex mechanisms for tier interdependencies. Uh, but other than that, um, the idea here is that all the information can go into the TI ISO format, but not necessarily in, back into every um, yeah. source okay. format. So yeah. Transcriber, for example, has a single layer of transcription, so you can't have any additional um, annotation layers when you go back to Transcriber. It's simply not possible. Yeah. So thank you very much uh, for, for your talk.